Uh, hello everyone. So in this video, we will discuss about the regularization techniques in machine learning. First, uh, what do you mean by a regularization? So here while developing a machine learning model, so you must have encounter a situation in which the training accuracy of the model is high, but the validation or testing accuracy is low. So this is known as overfitting in machine learning domain. Regularization helps to prevent this overfitting. I mean by a regularization. So in a machine learning to prevent overfitting, we are adding a penalty term to loss function. So how can we define a loss function? It is the difference between the actual and predicted value. So the model can become too complex. So uh, this penalty term discourages the model from becoming the too complex and helps in generalization of better performance in the unseen data. So why this regularization is important? This regularization helps in addressing this issue by reducing the model's complexity and improving its ability. How can we identify the model is having a overfitting condition? So when high accuracy on the training data but low accuracy on the testing data. So the model learn some noise in the training instead of learning the patterns. What is the role of regularization? It helps eliminating the overfitting by simplifying the model and to focus on the important coefficients. So these are the various types of regularization. L1 regularization that we call it as lasso. Then L2 regularization it is a ridge type of regularization. Then elastic net regularization. So it is a combination of both L1 and L2 model. So here in this L1 type we adding a penalty to sum of the absolute values. Then it can lead to sparse model. So remaining coefficients can be set to 0. In L2 the same process is done by adding a penalty to sum of squared values. Here we are adding penalty to the magnitude value. Here in the penalty can be added to sum of squared values. So it is shrinking the coefficients towards 0 but rarely setting them to 0. So it is effective for reducing the influence of highly correlated features. Elastic net normally combines both the models thereby providing a balance between the future selection and the coefficient shrinking. Lasso regularization. The full form of lasso is least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. So here it uses a technique thereby adding the absolute value of magnitude of the coefficient as a penalty term to loss function. So it also helps us achieve feature selection by penalizing the weights to approximately equal to 0. So sparsity, so this future selection can lead to sparse model. So it's having fewer non-zero coefficients. So from them we can reduce its complexity. L2 regularization which is a ridge regularization. So in this we are shrinking the coefficients towards 0 but rarely them to 0. So it have high correlated futures and it prevents the overfitting. So here there is a high level of stability than ordinary least sequence regression. So whenever there is a multicollinearity concept, this helps to avoid high correlation between the futures. So elastic net regularization, as we discussed before, it is a combination of both L1 and L2 method. So it is having a future selection performance by shrinking some coefficients to zero and some stabilizes the model by shrinking the other coefficients. So it is a high level of versatility. So thereby it is dealing with the high dimensional data set with the more number of futures. Dropout regularization. So in addition to the previous regularization techniques, we have to discuss some techniques that will be helpful in both machine and deep learning process. So while training the neural network, we have to drop some neurons and their connections, thereby forcing the model to depend on different futures. So this helps in improvement of the generalization concept. So it uh, thereby reducing the overfitting by co-adaptation between the neurons. So bias, bias normally refers to the errors which occur when we try to fit a statistical model on a real world data that doesn't fit perfectly well on some mathematical model. Variance implies the error value that occurs when we try to make predictions by using data that is not previously seen in the model. So here the situation arises 
high variance that occurs when the model learns noise that present in the data we should find a proper balance between the two that is known as bias variance trade off that helps us prune the model from getting overfitted to the training data so there are different combinations between bias and variance so if there is a low variance and a high bias means it leads to underfitting and if there is a low bias and a high variance means it leads to overfitting of data the correct combination is low bias and low variance so in this condition the model can able to capture the data patterns and handle variations in the training data so this is a perfect scenario of a machine learning model so early stopping the regularization so we have to monitor the validation loss so whenever the validation loss starting to increase means that indicates it leads to overfitting so we should stop training at that point then preventing overfitting so we have to make sure that the model does not overfit the training data by stopping training so it reaches a point of diminishing at that time so here we have to normalize the inputs first so standard inputs to each layer of the neural network during deep learning training then gradient flow that helps in preventing the vanishing and exploring gradients then finally it reduces the overfitting so what do you mean by data augmentation regularization so we can able to increase the data size by transforming the data into several formats then improving the generalization so we can able to improve its ability to generalize to unseen data then reducing the overfitting rather than memorizing the data it is able to learn the data then we have to use this regularization so whenever there is a high dimensional data or whenever the model has to be deal with high data sets we should go for regularization then if there is a problem of overfitting arises then at that time we prefer for regularization then if you want to improve the generalization to new unseen data in real world application we should go for regularization i hope you understand the concept of regularization in machine learning so uh, meet you in the next video till then it's goodbye from vijay